Welcome back to Afternoon Express. If you're navigating anxiety, we are here to equip you with all the tools and the techniques to get you through the stormy weathers. Welcome back, Dr. Green. Thank you. So I believe that you have an anxiety toolkit at your disposal that you're going to share with us. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the big principles must be addressed, and I think there are a few key issues that we can't afford to overlook in oh. survival. It's like your survival strategy, you know, when okay. you get into those situations. And what are they? I think if you start off with knowing your triggers, your default settings, in other words, you need to know that if I'm put in this situation and I see these early warning signs, we mentioned earlier on some palpitations, some sweaty, sweating palms, for example, some breathing techniques that change, some thoughts that just rush. You, we call it flight of thought, where they rush ahead of you and you can't take control of them and steer them in a controlled fashion. Know those settings, know those triggers, and identify those early symptoms. The, the, the next one is for you to cope with stresses and anxiety, you need to fix the, the rhythms in your life. And the rhythms, the things you have to do every day that contribute to your resilience capacity and your cognitive agility to adapt to stressful situations are things like enough sleep, that's seven to nine hours, your diet and exercise, make sure you see the role of food as fueling your activity every day yes. and not just a hobby. And then obviously we look at things like physical activity. And I chose that word on purpose because exercise often carries a negative connotation mm. for many people. Mm. They associate it with certain smells, certain sights and a gym yep. uh, and a lot of pain. <laughs> yep. But physical activity could be associated with dancing, barn dancing, line dancing, going for a walk along the beach, hiking on a weekend up a mountain trail and not knowing you're actually exercising while doing those steps up Table Mountain, for example. Uh, and then, of course, we look at other things that are in your daily rhythms, which are things like silencing your mind and finding a moment to focus selectively and focus your attention on one specific thing. And that allows you to develop cognitive agility in saying, I've chosen to focus on this now to complete this task, to be successful at what I'm doing, and I'll get to the other things at the appropriate time. Yes. So that's like a muscle you can train, yes. and it's absolutely fantastic. And then, of course, you work on the cognition. So we've heard of a thing called CBT, Cognitive yes. Behavioral Therapy, which is one of the mainstays of treating anxiety, yes. where we work with your thought processes around any specific theme, uh, if it's driving in traffic, for example, what are your thoughts? We go and analyze what are the things that have contributed towards your opinion and perception of driving in traffic being such a real fear, you yep. know, that, that cripple you almost. And then we go and break it down. And then when you start feeling the thought of, oh, I'm anticipating going home in traffic, what can you do? What's the step by step approach in my cognitions that I could work at when challenging the, the thoughts that are trying to break into my mind at that time? And CBT, often practiced by, by specially qualified psychologists and even some psychiatrists, very useful, can also raise the neurotransmitter levels like serotonin in the brain, yeah. uh, even as much as medication does for some people that suffer with depression and anxiety. So powerful technique uh, that one must incorporate. So when you, when you speak, I've been reading up a lot on, on, on CBT, which I absolutely love, and I also believe that it's uh, one of the therapies that works most when it comes to anxiety, and that's exposure therapy. Yes. Can you tell us more about exposure absolutely. therapy? Absolutely. So you are exposed to the very thing that you fear because you anticipate a certain outcome after being exposed to something. You are anticipating if a rat or a mouse runs over your foot in the kitchen <laughs> that something bad's going to happen and yet you might even die. Yes. You know, but... What the outcome is, after you've been exposed, your belief system is challenged because yes. your behavior is led by your belief system. So if you have behavior of fear, trembling, running away from a search situation, like going to a mall, for example, because of the social pressure mm -hmm. and not being able to get out if you're claustrophobic and you don't know where the exits are, if you are exposed to that and realize, oh my word, even although I didn't find an exit and I wasn't allowed to leave the mall, Nothing bad happened to me. I actually survived it. And that changes then your belief system and your cognition. Yes. So that exposure therapy is then very important in you readjusting your thought processes and your cognitions to help you move forward and overcome you know, any other future fears. Doctor, I love, I love the language that you speak. You speak a lot about preventative care in term, terms of putting into place um, your mindfulness exercises, your movement, you know, move in any way yes. you can. Just get those steps in and don't be sedentary. Regulation, about, yeah. Yes, you speak about the importance of sleep. And that is all so wonderful, you know, when it comes to preventative medicine. But tell me when someone is really chronic 
and the anxiety levels are chronic. Absolutely. How do you know that, number one, and what do you do, number yeah. two? So I think the first thing is, are they functioning? And when we speak about your, your functional level, we mean, are you functioning in a healthy frame of mind in your social relationships? In other words, are you coping with your anxiety and not projecting it onto those around you with detrimental relationships? Are you not so irritated and fearful that you are perhaps being emotionally abusive to your spouse, to your children, and just... Mm totally not approachable or your behaviour is not appropriate for the trigger. You know, if someone asks you something and you just go off at them, yeah. you can imagine there's a, there's a threshold. Yeah. Uh, then obviously your functionality at work. Are you producing the quality standard and uh, the outcomes that you need to be doing at work? And has that shifted since you've been exposed to certain stresses that you haven't dealt with appropriately? So we, we have to identify those chronic chronic uh, stresses in our yeah. lives and then see when it does impact our functionality because that's when you need to seek help. So you can try other things like have you slept enough? Are you eating all right? Are you exercising to regulate your energy levels? Are you spending time with the right kind of people with good dialogue? Mm -hmm. But if that's not working and you're still going down in a downward spiral, you need to up your intervention and your intervention would mean I need to see someone that specialises in anxiety to help me with something more constructive here. Doctor, thank you so much thank for you. sharing your expertise with us. Hopefully those tips and tools and techniques will help you in navigating your life challenges with greater ease and confidence.